All right, guys, 10 seconds to go before we get to round two. This is Lee with Untapped Potential. We unfortunately lost round one in game three due to some lousy draws and not getting lands in game three, but we kind of kept a somewhat sketchy hand, and our opponent had the nut draw with a bunch of really great elves. But now it's game two. Our opponent has won the dice roll. They are deciding whether to mulligan, and we have to decide what to do with this hand. We've got enough to get Ram Roller out, but we don't have enough to get any extra artifacts. We do have Mizzy Meddlers, however, and Whirler Rogue, which we're only one land off from being able to do, at which point Ram Roller becomes much better. So we're going to keep. We're on the draw as well, so we have a very good chance of drawing the lands this time, as opposed to last time where we just starved. And there's a Stratus Walk, which if we don't get there before that, will help us out. We're going to go ahead and drop the island, though, and yield to end of turn. So our opponent appears to be in white green, which is the renowned colors, and it appears they have a two drop. Or maybe not. We accidentally just skipped our first main phase. But we caught ourselves in time to play a I to play a mountain at the end of turn. So I was expecting our opponent to play something in there, and I was a bit surprised when they didn't. Okay, so now it's the three drop though, and this time they've brought an orchard spirit to the party. That's a 2-2 that can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. It doesn't have flying itself, though, which is it can't block ours. But it's a fun little combo. We also did get our island last turn, which is important, as it means we now can go Ram Roller turn 3, and then on its next turn when it has to attack, it'll have two little Whirler Rogue, but it will have two little Thopter Buddies to keep it company, which means it will be a house. You know... If it lives till then. We also drew Throwing Knife this turn, which as we saw back in game one of uh, round one, it's so good, guys. I am never passing this card again. Well, you know, never say never. Our opponent's attacking with a 2-2 here since they know we can't block. And that's fine. Two damage is two damage. That probably means, however, they're going to run something out in uh, second main, as otherwise they're going to take some damage next turn. And I know they're probably going to want to block our Ram Roller if humanly possible. The other fun thing about Whirler Rogue is it will give us some flyers, which will allow us to start blocking his Orchard Spirit in the coming turns. Lanoir Empath enters the battlefield, scries two, then reveals the top card. If they get a creature, they can put it into their hand. So our opponent's going to take some time, see what his next two draws would have been, and see if he has anything. Either way, we're going to get some information about what his next draw is going to be. Unless he puts it straight into his hand, in which case, we know it's in his hand. And if it's a Vastwood Gorger, I swear. He reveals Rock Smallers. Yay! So that's a, that's a pretty good card, I hear. We get our second Mountain as well, which means we can run out Ember Maul on our next turn. But first things first, Thopter Thopter. And now we have a 4-3 that has to attack this turn. So... Have at ye. And the best part, when his rock smallers come down, we'll be able to simply use our Ember Maul Hellion. Our opponent goes ahead and gets rid of their Lanowar's Empath. I guess they figure that it's already done its work. So next turn, we'll drop the Ember Maul Hellion. The rock smallers will just kind of sit there awkwardly, and we'll see what we can do. We also have Miz and Meddlers here, which we could always flash in at some point as well if our opponent tries to put an aura on anything which would be really sweet. But in the meantime, he just goes ahead and runs out the Rock Smallers, and let's see if he decides to attack us with the Orchard Spirit, knowing we could block it with our Thopters. Here's a spoiler, we're not going to, but we could. I need to keep them up in order to keep Ram Roller solid, so I'm just going to take the two damage here. Since our opponent's tapped out, we know they don't have a pump spell or anything, so it's just two damage. It's still very early days in this particular game. Off the top, we also draw a Prickle Boar, which will be excellent in the coming turns, but in, but in the meantime, we've got to keep ourselves uh, situated on the ground, and Ember Maw Hellion is the way to do it. But first, to the combat step. We're going to attack with our Thopter, and we have to attack with our Ram Roller, so if he sacrifices the Rock Smallers here, we'll just go ahead and do something else. But it doesn't, and we'll, but it doesn't appear that he's going to, so he takes a quick 6 damage. And in our second main, Ember Maw Hellion will hit the battlefield. Now we have a 4-5 who, uh, 
who, uh, with Trample, who will block his Rock Smallers incredibly well. So unless he has a combat trick or something, we're basically holding him down. And sure, he can keep getting in with the Orchard Spirit, but a little being pecked for two damage at a time doesn't amount to much when we're hitting him much harder. We also will have Stratus walk online soon, which means we could potentially put it on our Ram Roller and just make it effectively an unblockable 6 with our Flyers every turn. And then when we put the Throwing Knife on as well, that's a really quick clock for our opponent. We're waiting for our opponent to make some decisions now. They have some tough decisions to make. They could always just hold back and let us keep beating through in the air. They may not want to do that though. But either way, next turn, I think the Stratus walks coming down on the Ram Roller in order to put him up in the sky. Because sooner or later, our opponent would decide simply to trade the Rock Smallers with it, whereas we want to use this to beat our opponent, uh, opponent senseless. With a giant, literally ram-headed juggernaut creature. God, that's so fun. Anyway. So, and if the Rock Smallers hit us, we could be in trouble. Because a 6-6 six, six trample is incredible. Renown is so pushed, guys. It's such a good mechanic. Our opponent's still taking some time to think here, and it's literally his time he's spending, so that's his business. If it looks like he's just walked away from the computer or something, I'll cut the recording and turn it back on when he starts moving again. I say that as he goes to his combat step. He has no reason not to attack with the Orchard Spirit, you know, unless he wants to hold it back as a blocker next turn. Because we cannot block. He is attacking with the Rock Smallers, however. This is the part where I have to ask myself, how well do I know this format? What may he have? Well, never mind. He answered that question for us. He's given his card creature plus two, plus two, and flying until end of turn. So now it's a 6-6 six, six that's going to hit us because unfortunately we have no way to block it. Yuck. Okay, so we take 6 damage here, we go to 10, and he gets his Renown trigger on the Maulers. Which means there's only one game left to play, folks. Beat him before he beats us. And we are game. Currently on our field, our opponent has 14 life, and there's a, a Crow and Jailer, which could, will be certainly annoying in coming turns. Currently on our field, we have 12 power with six of it flying. There's a Guardian Automaton, which might be a smart play here. Our opponent will probably chump our Ram Roller, knowing that he's now on the Rock Smallers or Bust ticket. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put Stratus Walk on our Ram Roller like we talked about. So now we'll draw another card, and this creature can only block creatures with flying. So be it. We're not blocking. Hopefully we draw a land here. We don't. We draw a Scab Clan Berserker, which we cannot cast this turn. So what we're going to do instead is we're actually going to hold up Mizium Meddler in case he has another combat trick next turn. And in the meantime, we're going deep. We're not going... Are we going deep? He's just going to tap us down with the Jailer anyway, and we're going to flash out another Defender. So, yeah guys, we're going deep. If he doesn't block any of this, he takes 12 dam he takes 10 damage, which will put him at 4. And with a big flying 4-4 in the air, he can't take that chance. We still have Trample here, so we're getting through for 2 damage just instead of, you know, all of it. So our opponent goes to 6 here. Basically, the game now becomes, can we survive our opponent's next turn? He doesn't know that we're going to flash out a defender during the last possible second. So depending on what he does with his mana we might be able to just blow him out. Because currently, if he plays a combat trick to make his Maulers bigger, we just take it with our Mission Meddler. And even if he, and we can block since we have 10 life, so there's no way with what he currently has on his board that he wins this turn. But we gotta see what he has though. If he just attacks, we just block with the Whirler Rogue. He's gonna try to tap that down though, possibly with the Crow and Jailer. Which if he does, we could change that target to our meddler, but that would actually cause us to take more damage since this has four toughness where the rogue has only two. So then we possibly just flash this in as the blocker 
if he doesn't play a spell or ability. Tough choices all around, really. Or he can just concede. That works, too. Little anticlimactic, but eh, I'll take what I can get. Okay, so going into game two here, we saw a decent amount from that guy. He is on the on the green-white renown beatdown path. It's a solid deck. What do we want to do? Once again, I think Bonded Construct's just a little too cute for the matchup. So we're going to go ahead and take him out. And in his place, we're going to throw the more mid-range and more versatile Water Courser. This also... And uh, let's see... I think we're going to keep Abbott this time. I like him where he is. Ember Maw Hellion is just, does so much work. We didn't see any artifacts or enchantments from him, so I don't see any of these things making it in. And so far, we haven't seen any combat tricks from him that I think quite warrant the negate. Yeah, sure, he had the Mighty Leap, and that was cute, but that's not something I'm so worried about as the removal spells we had to face last time. Let's go. So our opponent's playing first again. And while we wait for him to decide to mulligan, we get a look at our own hand. It's got two lands, but it does have a starfish. We are on the draw. So it's a little greedy, but we have, you know, we have a turn two, turn three, turn four drop with a plan. Assuming we get another land, which we have several draws, at least one that will be assisted by the starfish. So I think we'll get there. Well, there's the throwing knife, which is cute, but not ultimately too helpful. So we're going to go ahead and pass turn, pass turn, and hope our opponent doesn't have a sick two drop. Well, we draw uh, yet another two drop. So we're going to go ahead and run out Sigiled Starfish here in case he plays a three drop next turn. And even if we don't draw a land next turn, we can play Alchemist Vial, which will draw us an extra card. We can even scry first with the starfish to find out what it is. So next turn, we are hopefully going to get a land. All right, there's the stalwart Avon, a renowned flyer, who's only going to hit us for one on his first turn, but he's going to go off after that. Land or bust, guys. That's a water courser. It don't look like no land I've ever seen. I don't feel guilty tapping the starfish here, though. And we're going to leave that on top. We're then going to play the Alchemist Vial to draw a card. Play our island. And yield to end of turn. Like I said, I don't mind tapping the Starfish here simply because, well, we can't block his uh, Sky Guy anyway, and if he has a hasty creature, well, we needed that land more. So our opponent hits us for one. He gets his Renown trigger and goes to two. He hasn't played a land yet. Maybe he was saving it for second main. Or maybe he doesn't have one. Maybe he's having the same trouble as we are. That would be great, but we'll find out. So going to his second main phase, he did have a land. He just held back on it. And does he have a four drop? Does he have something else to do this turn? Fingers crossed for no. Well, he gains four life and draws a card, which as far as things go is irritating, but it's certainly not the end of the world. It's not advancing his board state, and it gives us time to start to rally the defenses. They'll rally best if this is a land. Well, you know, sometimes good things happen. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and get out Whirler Rogue. We're going to get some Thopters up in the air, wave them around like we just don't care, we can use him to start chump blocking his stalwart Avon if we want to, or we can just hold them back, which I think for right now is what we're going to do. We've only taken one damage. We're not going to attack with the starfish because that just seems a bit pointless. We're going to hold it back for the end of turn scry, and this should start helping us stabilize. Finding another mountain would be excellent, so hopefully that's what the starfish will help us do. Our opponent isn't holding back with his renowned creature, and as I said before, I'm not in the mood to chump just yet with, it, with any of my thopters. I'd rather hold them back for later when I know something worse is coming. So we take two more damage. So going to our opponent's second main phase here, they have five mana, which is, which is rock smaller, but instead it's Lanawar Empath. So he gets to once again look at the top two cards of his library and put one of them back on top. If it's a creature, he gets it. He put a card on the bottom of his library, and he revealed Titanic Growth. So it wasn't a creature, so he didn't get to draw it. It's on top of his deck, so he's drawing that next turn. But it is a Titanic Growth, which is a Titanic pain in the... 
Well, you know how the sentence ends. Okay, so we now have to make yet again some more tough decisions. And I also forgot to scry at the end of my opponent's turn like an idiot. I'm going to tape a sticky note to my screen real quick. Hold on. So what we're going to do instead here is we're going to go ahead and drop the throwing knife. And then we're going to equip the throwing knife to one of our thopters. And as much as I worry we're doing this too soon, I need to maintain control of this battlefield and get in for some damage. So we're going to go ahead and attack with the team, except for you, Starfish. We're going to also go ahead, and since I don't think there's anything our opponent can do for their one open mana, we are just going to go ahead and sacrifice the throwing knife and kill the Lanawar Empath before he can use his freaking Titanic growth to save it. So yes, that gets through. He no longer has any untapped blockers to declare blockers with this turn. So we get in for four, returning him to his starting total of 20. And that'll do it for us. We still have our Al Alchemist Vile's activated ability, preventing target creature from attacking or blocking this turn which if he drops a big threat, we'll use as we try to build up more time. We can't use it this turn as we are tapped out for mana. And speaking of tapping out, Starfish. Don't let me forget. So our opponent's once again attacking for two in the air. This is fine. It's pecking at us. We're on a clock, but it's not a big one. And I'm much more worried about the fact that he, I mean, he could Titanic growth this right now, but I don't think he wants to do that just, just yet. That's more of a finisher. He has six mana as well, which is a lot. And here comes... Christ. Guys, here's another little secret about Lee. I hate this damn card so much. So much. It is literally one of the very, very... If... If Whirlerogue isn't the best uncommon in the set, Sentinel the Eternal Watch is. We're actually going to put Jesse and Thief away. Oh my god, I hate that card so much. So we hit a fifth land here, now that I put the salt away. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and roll out Ram Roller. Uh, at the beginning of combat, each opponent's turn, tap target creature that player controls. God, do you have to? Ah, eh, well, anyway, we're going to go to combat. Waiting for our opponent's use to use his activated ability. He's going to tap down our Whirler Rogue, which is actually the one I care about the least here. So, okay, buddy. And we are going to go ahead and attack in the air. Because at this point, we just kind of got to do what we can do. I'm not going to use this this turn. He's welcome to attack me with that if he wants to. The Alchemist Vial is going to be useful on our next turn to make that Sentinel the Eternal Watch unable to block us with our Ram Roller. Unless, of course, he, you know, taps down the Ram Roller, which is, you know, a, a good strategy, I hear. We may end up sacrificing the Starfish to block this attack especially since he's threatening titanic growth. And there's the caustic caterpillar, probably from the sideboard, that he can sacrifice to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Hey guys, you know the, the you know the sad trombone music, the wham 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 wham. Uh y'all can just go ahead and imagine that in your heads real quick, okay? Okay. So Ram Roller just got, you know, rammed. I'll let you figure out what that means. And we're just going to let him get through this turn. This is the part where I go ahead and throw the starfish in harm's way. We get our consolation parting gift of one last scry from the fish. And we find Harbinger of Tides, which I hear is really excellent when our opponent actually taps his giant creature. But still, it's good enough to leave on top. Why does it have Vigilance? Why? Why did you make this card so good? Wizards, please. 
Okay, so step one, we're going to go ahead and cast this for two. We're not going to flash it out. That would be a little too much, I think. We're going to return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. I mean, maybe I should keep the Harbinger out until, you know, they Titanic growth or something, but eh, I'll take what I can get. Yes, we're going to use his ability to return that to your hand. We're going to at least buy ourselves some time on this particular clock. We are also going to Water Courser. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed to combat, where our opponent is inevitably going to tap down one of our creatures, probably one of our Thopters. Because we can't attack on the ground, and no, he's tapping down Whirler Rogue. Oh yeah, because then we could tap two untapped creatures to make target creature unblockable this turn. That is a thing we can do, isn't it, guys? Please don't tell me I missed some like some sort of lethal in game one because of this. I don't want to know it. Either way, I didn't attack because I misclicked there, but we'll pretend it's because I had a strategy. I'm just leaving my two artifacts untapped so that a target creature can't be blocked this turn. Obviously. Makes perfect sense, right? Not really. Okay, fine. I freely admit that occasionally I make mistakes. Here comes the Sentinel once again. And I'm not going to block here. I'm just going to go ahead and eat the Titanic growth, probably. Our opponent doesn't do it, though. He's clearly saving it for either when it's lethal or to save one of his creatures. And you know what? Fair play. Yeah, Sentinel of the Eternal Watch is one of those cards that, if I had gotten it, would have been good enough to push me into white. This card, or at least a splash, this card is Nutter Butters. And there's a champion of the forward order, giving our opponent two more two more life, because they didn't have enough of that already. Ah well, them's the brakes. Another island seems all well and good. As we decide to go ahead and roll out Guardian Automaton. Who eventually we will totally sacrifice in order to gain some life. But in the meantime, we're going to tap both of our Thopters. No, wait. If I do that now, he's just going to tap it down with Sentinel the Eternal Watch. So we're going to put it on our... No, 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 not that. Okay. So Sentinel the Eternal Watch goes off. Did I even click on anything? Did I? Yeah, guys, I, I clicked right with Thopter. Oh my god. Magic UI can be a little, little unorthodox sometime. So he's tapping down our new thing. And I can't even attack with my flyers anymore. Ugh. Guys, you're watching an idiot play magic. Okay, pass turn. I'm gonna put a stop on our opponent's begin combat step here, though, so that we next turn can sacrifice our alchemist vial and prevent the 4 6 from attacking for a turn. Oh, my goodness gracious. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you do not record magic past 2 in the morning. Things get a little bit hairy. All right, so target creature can't attack or block this turn. So we're at least saving ourselves at least a little bit of hurt. Okay, go ahead and turn that back off now. So our opponent's only getting in the air with the 1-3, it looks like. So the death of a thousand pecs slowly but surely begins again. I realize how I did this wrong now. I tapped something earlier thinking I was tapping the first thing and not doing the target. That's what I did. Well, now we know. 
opponent only has two cards left in hand, but they have eight friggin' mana, which they can do a lot with. They don't, though, because we still know they have one Titanic growth. Well, there's Sigil of Valor, I suppose. So it gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn for each other creature that we control. And my computer's decided that now is the perfect time to install drivers. Okay, sure, why not? Okay. Gonna go ahead and put this on, let's say for funsies, put it on Guardian Automaton. And now we're gonna go, go to the beginning of combat step where our opponent is promptly going to tap it down. All according to our master plan, you see. Because in response, I'm going to activate Whirler Rogue. Target creature can't attack her, but cannot block this turn because I tap this artifact and this artifact. Target creature can't be. I thought it was can't block, not can't be blocked. Right then, let's just go to game three and hide our shame, yeah? Save ourselves some time. Okay. What on earth is wrong with me? Okay. I'm gonna go get a Diet Coke after this. I clearly need some caffeine. But in the meantime, let's try it once more. We're not the only ones still playing, which makes me feel at least a little better. So our opponent's clearly spending a little more time in their sideboard. Hmm. Hmm. Sentinel the Eternal Watch. Why? Why, 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 why? I hate that card so much. Okay, but enough about that. Maybe I should have put in the bounce spell to put it back in their hand at some point. Do that during some sort of critical juncture. Ah, uh, nah, I'm still, I'm still content with this. Yes, we'll play first. His hand is, yeah, his hand's fine. We got the Stratus Walk, Gestion Thief, Wombo Combo again. We also got Abbot of Carol Keep for whatever that's worth. Yield till end of turn. Our opponent goes ahead and drops in a Crow and Jailer early, which is something I'm not overly crazy about here, but we'll make do. There's our Ember Maul Hellion, and we do at least already have, excuse me, double red, assuming we get the rest of the way there. I'm also going to go ahead and play Sigil of Valor here, so that on the turn three, or excuse me, turn four, we're going to play Gestion Thief next turn, of course, but on turn four, we can put this on it and Stratus Walk if we need to. And next turn, before we play our land, we'll play Abbot of Carol Keep, in case there's another land on top. Our opponent's going to hit us for one here, and you know what? That's great. You do that, buddy. So, we go to 19. And that's all the opponent's doing. Okay, we draw a land for turn. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and play Gestion Thief here. I see absolutely zero reason not to. And that'll do it for us. So next turn, we can decide how we sort of want to play this here. If he taps, if he keeps the man up to tap our guy down, we'll just go ahead and play Abbot of Carol Keep and equip the Sigil of Valor anyway. And if he plays something else, then next turn we'll put the Sigil on and take off flying through the air. That would also be a prowess trigger, so maybe he won't. Okay, he doesn't do anything else, so it's safe to assume that at the beginning of combat this turn, he's going to tap down our Gestion Thief. In fact, he doesn't even wait that long. He does it during our upkeep, which I think is a bit of a mistake, as it tells us now definitely what our game plan should be. And that game plan is, don't touch the Thief. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and play our land for the turn. Should have run out the abbot first, I suppose. Let's go... Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and do it anyway. I don't care. If it is a land, that, which is what we were hoping for anyway, so be it. We have as many as we need. And if it's not, oh well. So my revealed card, which can be played, is Throwing Knife. And guess what, guys? We've got the mana to do it, so... Perfect. 
We also get two prowess triggers off two creatures that can't use it this turn. Either way, though, that throwing knife's going to be amazing for us going forward. Oh yeah, I gotta choose which of these guys gets their thing first. Not that it matters. Alright guys, that ended up being a really excellent turn for us. Abbot of Carol Keep, it was nice of you to finally show up for one of these games, but I'm glad you did. Glad to have you, buddy. So our opponent runs down now to their 10th minute, or we're still at 12, but he also hits his 4th land, so he's doing pretty good. He has 6 cards left in his hand. And also, now that we have 2 creatures, he probably can't play another creature and use the Jailer to tap our guy down. And if he does tap the, some, want somebody down with the Jailer during uh, upkeep again like he did last time, then we'll know even better what our line of play is next turn. And it's clear our opponent's having to spend some time thinking as well. Because currently we have, two, we have two artifacts we can put on one creature, which will make it more powerful. The Sigil will actually, you know, give something now for each other creature, so it'll be helpful. We can also just run out Ember Maw Hellion next turn and just be like, Hey guy, we got something big, so uh, hope you're paying attention. Or we can just put Stratus Walk on our guy, drawing a card and starting to smack through the air, with two prowess triggers if he taps out to play a creature. Which would be... I'm no uh, mathematician here, but by my math, that's what we like to call a lot of damage. So, we have several different lines of play available to us, which is good. Op as many options as possible are better. It just requires us to think fast. And I wish I could say the same for our opponent, who's clearly not thinking in much of a hurry whatsoever. Okay, there's the Caustic Caterpillar, so I guess the decision now comes to whether that stays up as a chump blocker, or whether it gets sacrificed to destroy target artifact or enchantment. And it looks like he's decided now as opposed to later that that throwing knife has got to go. Well, so long guy, we hardly knew you. However, he does not have the mana though na mana available now though for the a crow and jailer's ability, so he's just going to keep it up as a chump blocker. So now we have to decide. The step first, of course, is playing a mountain. So I think what the line of play here is we're going to go ahead and put Stratus Walk on Abbot of Carol Keep, which will trigger two instances of prowess and will let us draw a card. We draw Guardian Automaton. The next line of play that we're going to do here, this only gets something if it attacks alone. And I don't think that's something we want to do this turn. So instead, oh god, I'm not frozen, am I? No, okay, thank god. Okay, next we're going to run out the Sigiled Starfish. Then, we're going to go ahead and begin combat for our turn. We're going to attack with both the Abbot and the Jesse and Thief. He's probably going to block the Thief, as I don't think he's going to want us to draw a card. Eh, but I've been wrong before. Finally, at the end of turn, because we might as well, we're going to put the Sigil of Valor on to Jesse and Thief for potential use next turn. We don't have anything else to do with this mana, so we might as well put it on. Because next turn, if we don't draw a land, we're probably going to want to drop Ember Maw Hellion to do extra damage with our 2-1 Flyer. Or we can drop... Well, no, Guardian Automaton is a creature, so that doesn't trigger Prowess. Or we can drop Whirler Rogue next turn. We just have a world of possibilities. You know I'd do that. Alright, so here's Elvish Visionary, which our opponent's going to use to draw a card. He still has the mana afterwards left over, possibly for a combat trick, or to tap one of our people down with his Acroan Jailer. Which, you know, is a decent offense, but at the moment we're going pretty wide. So he's going to have to do more than that. So at our upkeep... He seems to have the hold still. He's going to go ahead and choose now what he's going to tap down. And yeah, to the surprise of no one, it's the thief. We draw another starfish, which is, isn't something we actually need. And since uh, we our flyer is unblockable and our ground game is pretty tight right now, we're going to go ahead and play Ember Maw Hellion. Which means now our flying red source of Abbot of Carol Keep is going to do an additional damage this turn. And I've just had to make sure real quick that I had actually selected him. We're going to go ahead and hit our opponent here for 3, putting him down to 12. Our opponent can't block since we have flying. And if I'd had an extra mana, I would have put my Sigil of Valor on him. 
Oh, that's going to be so spicy. Okay, yield till end of turn. So now we also have the ability to start moving our Sigil of Valor onto our 3-1 Flyer, which will make it a 6-5 a, uh, Flyer that deals an extra damage from Ember Mahalian. Our opponent's at do-or-die mode at this point, as he's got to get that off the field or get something into the air that can intercept it. And with us Sigil of Scry fishing every turn, we're in a good position here in order to draw a solution. Our opponent has played a Charging Griffin, which is a flying 2-2 two -two that gets plus one plus one during uh, when it attacks. Which means he will have something he can block or flyer with next turn. But now he's in the unfortunate position of the fact that we can just go wide on the ground. And here's a Cleric of the Forward Order as well, a 2-2, two -two, which uh, will let him gain two life for each Cleric of the Forward Order he controls, which is, at the moment, one. So he gets two life, going to 14. All right, at the end of his turn, we're going to go ahead and use the Scryfish. There's Reclusive Artificer, who is a great card. We're going to leave on top, but we're not going to play it next turn. We're going to wait till we get Whirler Rogue out, then we're going to do that. So in the meantime, the play here is to go ahead and do Whirler Rogue, because we want to get as many dudes out on the field as possible. Then we're going to take the Sigil, and we're going to put it on Abbot of Carol Keep with Flying instead. We're going to go ahead and have him attack alone here, which means he is going to become, in uh, layman's terms, enormous. He's now an 8-7, and our opponent is certainly going to block him with the Charging Griffin. He can't afford not to. And we still have control of the ground game. Is our opponent not blocking? Our opponent does not block, and they go to 5. We have a very big field here, and... Oh, crap. Hey, guys, remember that card that had Gideon on it earlier? The one that basically is a board wipe? I think our opponent has that, and they were holding off to the last second hoping we'd go wide, and they're now about to nuke the ever-loving tar out of our field. I hope I'm wrong. Okay, so our opponent's swinging at us in the air for two, which is three because of Charging Griffin's ability. We're at 19. I'm not quite sure what his game is, but either way, I don't feel like taking chances. So I'm going to throw a Thopter in the way. Just because I'm not sure what this guy's game is. Maybe he's just turning everything sideways, but I'm wary. Let's phrase it that way. Maybe he has another flyer, so he was just trying to get through for some damage where he could. I guess we'll see. Here comes something. Wild Instincts. Okay, so I guess he was trying to get through a little more before that. So he goes ahead and kills our creature, sacrifices his own with it. We still have a very wide field here, though. And he no longer has any air defense. So he goes ahead and concedes because he knows he's, we uh, win in the air next turn. So that match is over, guys. We won it 2-1. to one. There's still another group playing, and we have a bit of time left on the clock. I'm going to go get that Diet Coke in me like I promised so that I'm actually awake and coherent for round three. And I'll see y'all there. Lee with untapped potential. One round to go. See you there.